OK, I think we can probably go ahead and get started. Um, so uh, my name is Brian Stinson. I work on the uh, CentOS infrastructure team. Um, and I actually work for Red Hat. The, uh, the CentOS and Fedora infrastructure teams have actually combined, and we're working on the same team, which um, provides us some interesting opportunities. And uh, one of the things that I'm going to talk about today is uh, Fedora CI. So. Um, to give you a little bit of background of what I started working on before, um, uh, you know, before our, our teams merged from a, a company perspective, but also before we started uh, working more closely between the CentOS and Fedora projects themselves as separate communities, um, I came in to work on, uh, you know, a few a few different things. In the CentOS space, we have um, uh, special interest groups who are building packages on top of CentOS Linux and so I, I actually came in to do a little bit of work on that work and also stand up an infrastructure to help us uh, test our things over in the CentOS community. And uh, that's kind of what, um, what allowed this project to be so interesting. Um, the Fedora CI initiative in particular is because it was one of the ways that we were able to collaborate both on a, um, on a team level, but also between two communities that are you know, pretty closely related. Um, they're, the Fedora and CentOS definitely have different audiences. We deliver on different life cycles, but the, the two communities are, uh, we do a lot of the same activities, uh, is, is I guess my point. And uh, Fedora CI was one of the projects that kind of allowed us to get there. Um, so in, in terms of the, um, uh, sort of what is Fedora CI, because, uh, like many terms in our industry, CI means different things to different people. Uh, and so I want to talk about this specifically as, um, as a number of different things. So what is Fedora CI? What are we talking about here? Um, it's, it's an objective in the Fedora Council, which is um, uh, you know, just a way to, to help guide the governance in the Fedora project itself. Uh, there's a, a written set of... Um, a uh, set of things that the initiative is trying to do. And uh, we run that through kind of a, a governance process to, to make sure that we, we all are on the same page about things. Uh, we do have people that work on it. This is uh, both uh, folks who are, you know, do this as their day job, but then uh, also folks have, uh, are, are coming in out of the communities to, uh, um, uh, to help us with some work. I had, it has infrastructure. Um, this is the part that, uh, that I most care about because that's what I do for my day job. Uh, I, I help manage some of the, uh, the actual hardware that these things run on specifically for the Fedora project. And there's a process to go through. Um, one of the things that, uh, that the smart folks in the OSCI and uh, Upstream First teams have done is they've actually created a process for you to get, get your tests out into uh, Fedora land. This is specifically uh, focused on testing uh, packages mostly before they get into um, uh, into a distribution. Uh, so that's the link to the objective right there. It's kind of a long URL um, and we kind of put a little bit of extra in there. Uh, docs.fedoraproject.org is a good place to find most things related to uh, governance and uh, they're doing a lot of things uh, to move documentation about the individual objectives over into uh, one specific site so you can get everywhere. That's, um, that's the objective. I know Dominic is also working on an updated proposal for uh, the CI objective. So definitely, um, if you're interested in this sort of thing, check out, uh, uh, check out that link there. Um, and this is, a, again, kind of a, this was kind of a weird thing that, we went through in the beginning just to kind of give a little bit of history of the project. Uh, like I said, this was one of the first um, collaborations between the two communities, and so uh, this caused a, uh, I saw a little bit of confusion on the part of uh, Fedora maintainers who were seeing topics come through on FedMessage with the CentOS CI uh, topics on them. And it, it's, uh, it's kind of, it's kind of fun to have that conversation over and over again. It's, it's legitimately fun to talk about the, uh, the ways that our two communities are working together. And this one in particular allows us to sort of uh, decouple 
our infrastructures. So if you're familiar with how things are kind of organized in the, in the CentOS and Fedora projects, most all of our build system work in Fedora is concentrated in Phoenix. There's a data center there that holds the build system. Um, and most of the, uh, the, the operating system before it heads out to the mirrors, uh, that stuff is hosted there. In CentOS, most of our community hardware is actually in Raleigh. And so there's, a, there's kind of a big gap between the two, uh, the two data centers in terms of uh, geographic location, uh, connectivity between the two locations. And so that was a kind of a coordination problem on the infrastructure level that we had to deal with, which um, I know where, so one of the implementation details is um, a lot of this stuff is triggered by, uh, by fed messages coming out of the build system. And that, uh, that caused some interesting things that we had to do in the tooling uh, in order to make sure that, that, that all of these processes run when they're supposed to. Um, and I don't, see, uh, I don't see Jeremy or Aurelian here, but, um, but they're working on a project to make this a little bit better for us too, which is, uh, which is pretty great. Uh, to talk a little bit about uh, CentOS CI and kind of um, set the background for what we were doing beforehand, it's, uh, uh, we started up a CI service for uh, projects that, that were really uh, more or less separate from the distribution, but they wanted to build and test and deliver their stuff on top of the distribution. And so that's the work that we were doing before we, um, we kind of started this partnership with Fedora. And we had a, a, a number of different machines that were available to us to do that. We'd, um, brought some over from uh, just machines that we had and we put it into our budgets and so we had a, just a little bit of an extra capacity there for, um, for running test type workloads. And that put us in a great place when um, a couple of years ago we had the, uh, you know, we, we kind of got into a room and decided that it was a good idea to expand our test efforts uh, specifically to the package ecosystem. <coughs> Um, and that required us to think a little bit differently um, about some of the tooling that we use. Because in, uh, in the CentOS CI infrastructure, you know, beforehand, we basically coordinated with individual projects one-on-one -on -one with, you know, what does your test suite look like? And we'll just give you a job here that you can uh, do all of your magic things. And uh, in your own specific way, you can have a, a, a place there, you know, that that sort of thing. But we found that we needed to kind of um, uh, consolidate the process a little bit, just because that makes, things, that makes things easier. And we really needed to uh, create kind of a CI community out of this whole thing. And it's, a, it's a kind of a loose community, to be honest. There's, you know, there's not, uh, there's not a, a single a uh, group of people who are uh, focused on, sh on delivering a vision for specifically CI, but there are a bunch of us that are working in the same space and uh, consolidating on infrastructure and uh, working on the same tooling is, is helpful there. And so for the Fedora CI initiative, I, I made this, slock, uh, this slide back at, um, when I gave a similar talk at Flock, and I tried, to, I tried to get half of the teams involved <laughs> and try and fit them on a slide. This is not half of the teams that are involved doing something related to CI. Um, but, you know, each, each individual team has a different piece of, uh, of what's going on. And I, I don't expect you to read that in the back, but uh, so we have the, um, we've got the Fedora CI, the OSCI team that works on, you know, some stuff over here. You've got me up there and the CentOS infrastructure team. The Fedora infrastructure team cares about, you know, build system work. And then there's folks, um, you know, elsewhere in the CentOS infrastructure team who care about the packages coming out of CentOS. And, you know, it's, it's just a, a lot of folks that are, uh, uh, they're doing similar things, but they want different things out of the, the process. And so we kind of had to, um, we had to think about our infrastructure in a way that, uh, that allowed people to get things done. So we started deploying OpenShift uh, a while ago, specifically to, uh, to support the Fedora CI initiative. But then we realized that a lot of this tooling is helpful for 
you remember that, that old stuff we were doing in CentOS CI with the individual projects and a lot of different, uh, different styles of testing, we found that, uh, that doing the work to support Fedora CI um, deployed in OpenShift is actually a great way to start uh, reaching some of those audiences as well. And uh, just to give some, um, some stats for the, the uh, nerd people like me, uh, apps.ci.centos.org, uh, we started with Origin 3.5. We have upgraded that a few times, and we have plans for upgrades later. We started with 19 bare metal nodes. Um, I think we're up to somewhere around 30 nodes that are, um, that are involved there. Uh, and Jenkins. So Jenkins was something that we had a, a little bit of expertise in beforehand, and uh, that allowed us to, to kind of scale out um, some of those operations by uh, deploying the separate masters that you need for all the individual projects that we support, including Fedora CI in, uh, in OpenShift itself. And that's what it looks like. That's the, um, uh, this is the CI pipeline project. So if you, if you submit a, a package build to Fedora, um, there's a job somewhere in here that uh, is actually triggered and runs the tests on your packages. Um, and there's, there's logs in there. I'll, I'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, the CI pipeline objects and libraries were, uh, that was another team who worked on um, actually standing this up so that the, uh, you can interface with the standard test interface, which I'll talk about in a minute. But uh, all of this is some of that glue work that we needed to put in between uh, you know, triggering based off of a message and then running the standard test interface based on what the packager tells you the test should be. And Ansible. The standard test interface is, um, is all written in Ansible. You can, um, you can go find that out on uh, Pagger. It's, uh, it's a pretty great way to uh, support a number of different operations that you might want to do inside your tests. One example is, um, we're finding out in you know, the regular CentOS CI uh, place I talked about all of those, those different projects, you might have a, a, a separate test harness, you might have a, a separate way to run the test harness, you might have uh, a few things that you need to install in the system beforehand. The standard test interface and some of the roles that have already been implemented are great ways to, um, uh, to actually help you tell the CI system what it needs to do. Um, because it's my job as, as an infrastructure guy to you know, give you some hardware that you can run a workload on. It's the job of the CI pipeline to uh, interface with uh, the hardware and the software to kind of provision an environment for you to stage the thing in that you're going to test and then also to run the tests themselves. And the, that coupling between the CI pipeline objects and the standard test interface is the really key relationship that, uh, that kind of makes this happen. Uh, so the process of doing that, um, it's pretty simple. This is kind of an older version, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a tiny little bit of Ansible that, um, that you put in your uh, uh, YAML file that is committed to this disk git, and then the pipelines uh, actually run. You can run these on your own mach machine. Um, this will uh, you know, basically install that package for you and then uh, run that little check script there. Um, but there's no, there's no real magic here is what I'm saying. It's just a collection of tools that we've, we've put together to um, uh, take the pieces that you have and turn it into an automatic process. And this is what the pipeline looks like. Um, this one is for Vim. Uh, so there's a bunch of different stages that happen here. Um, the, the pipeline itself actually uh, kind of composes a, um, a, a test machine for you, installs the package on it, and then runs that test uh, thing that you defined there. Um, the, uh, to talk a little bit about the uh, some of the mechanics. Um, so there's a number of different test contexts that you can, you can run in. One of the most interesting problems that we had um, was it's easy to run the container-based workloads in OpenShift, 
but sometimes you really want an actual machine that kind of um, that behaves like a machine, uh, uh, something that you installed on a cloud provider or something like that. And so the, uh, there's one particular part of the pipeline that actually composes a, a cloud image and then boots it in, inside of OpenShift to, um, uh, to run those tests for you. And that's really helpful because you can classify your tests in certain ways. Um, and that's all, again, that's all part of the, the standard test uh, interface there. Uh, what's there we go that's better so what's coming next um, there's some uh, I think we're in pretty good shape uh, with the infrastructure that we have right now um, we've we've had a couple you know call it a couple of years of, of running these things through the pipeline and I think the the infrastructure and the process on the operation side is actually pretty okay right now. We've got some, some changes to make if we can uh, deliver some messages a little bit more uh, in, in a more um, uh, easy way that we can make sure that they actually happen. But uh, in terms of the, the operations process, it's gonna be um, you know, mostly hardware expansion, um, upgrades and testing that, uh, that new stuff that comes in via OpenShift and Jenkins and, and things like that, adding features to the uh, to the CI pipeline objects themselves. Um, but, uh, you know, I took a look yesterday. We, we ran 109 builds. Uh, this was either, um, uh, you know, real Koji builds or uh, things that came in via pull requests to the Diskit branches in Fedora. We ran about 109 of those through CI yesterday. Um, and you know, for the most part, the, the process is, is pretty well set for, on the operations side. Uh, the UI and onboarding uh, portion is, um, I know there's a, a little bit of, of work left to do, but I would encourage you, if you um, are interested in this sort of thing, uh, I had a link in here somewhere. Maybe I didn't. There's a, uh, but there's a, there was a talk here, uh, I think it was last night. Um, it was a very good start. Uh, sort of a workshop to, to actually play with some of the tests and they provide you some uh, some images there that are you, you can kind of see what someone else has done and you know translate that over into uh, into your tests if you have a, a package in Fedora um, so that one was really great and there's there was also another talk um, this week about the uh, I think it's titled something related to the contra inv setup which is uh, that's the software that we use to realize the CI pipeline in our OpenShift instance. And for uh, one thing that, that is really uh, kind of nice for, uh, for this year going forward um, is we do have a, a central place to talk about CI issues. Um, you know, I'm monitoring this as a, uh, you know, one of the infrastructure guys who is, is paying attention to things. Uh, I know the folks that are uh, on the OSCI team are looking at this. The, um, the folks that are working on the pipeline software itself are looking at this. So this is kind of a good clearinghouse to start with. If you don't necessarily know where you're, uh, if you're running into trouble and you don't necessarily know uh, wh what, where the problem is, uh, definitely start here because we're, we're all monitoring this. That's... Um, that's a pretty good overview of Fedora CI as you know, just kind of a high level and infrastructure related overview. I do wanna take a few minutes. It looks like we have a couple of minutes for questions if you have them, uh, but that's all I've got for you. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, is there any way for Fedora developers to trigger tests around on Sample CI? To trigger test runs? Yes, for example, yeah. I have an existing build and I, I would like to run a test from Fedora Diskit in CentOS CI. Can I trigger without running a Koji build? Uh, without running a Koji build, yeah. So, yeah. So the the question was, can you uh, can you trigger a test run without uh, running a Koji build? And the answer is yes. Um, if you add the the test specification to a pull request, uh, if, if it's now without pull request. Yeah, so if, if you already have uh, uh, the test specification committed to your repository, 
and any action that you do, you know, you, you do a pull request to a, a spec file or you commit to um, the, uh, um, the interface there, we actually do run one of the pipelines that does a scratch build for you and will run tests. But I, I don't it's, want to run any scratch build. I no, 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 the, the pipeline runs a scratch build for you. But I want to test an existing build, not a new scratch build. Uh, I like to test an existing build mm. with um, what is currently already committed um, into uh, this build. The tests are in this build and yeah, I'm not, already done. I, I just would like to rerun the test. I don't believe... Randomly, I want to rerun it. If, so if you want to rerun the tests, there's a keyword that you can you can use if you've already run the tests on it. Okay, but if, if the test wasn't run yet because I committed a new test to an existing package. Um, so I develop a test, so I commit a new test, that there's an existing package, I don't sure, what, rebuild anything. Did you have? Yeah, I don't, the, so e either the, uh, you can either trigger a rerun of the pipeline that, that has already existed, or you do need to do uh, a, a build or something like that. But do not have any plans to uh, allow for such feature? Uh, it's, is it filed in this um, in this tracker? I would I would file an issue in this tracker right here, and then uh, that's probably the best place to to figure out the mechanics of that. Yeah. Well, I was just going to mention, rerunning tests like that is kind of a generic problem we have. So I'm Adam, I started yep. on OpenQA, which does that. And we have the same kind of thing. Sometimes people are like, hey, this test in OpenQA failed. Or I just want to rerun the test for some reason. Can I, say, send out a request somehow to have the test run again? And the answer is kind of, well, no. And it's kind yep. of the same with Taskatron. So it's, it's like a generic thing that we, we talked about doing a generic solution for, but it didn't get sure. very far. Yeah. But I, yeah, I would I would definitely follow an issue here, and then um, we should figure out the because uh, there's there's a number of people that would be involved in 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 doing that. But yeah, yeah. Are there any plans to provide some of this nice goodness also for a sort of upstream project that lives in your style? Yes. Uh, so the the question was: Is there a plan to provide some of this goodness into? Um, you know, upstream projects in Pagger.io, for example, and uh, yes, very much so. Um, so I mentioned the uh, you know kind of the partnership relationship between CentOS CI as an infrastructure provider for this individual pipeline. Um, we do want to be the infrastructure provider for other pipelines as well, and so you know, putting your tests in the standard test interface makes it really easy for us to stand up a pipeline for you and say just go do it. Um, so it's not it, it it's not necessarily package specific, but um, but yeah, there are there are things we can do that um, in that space. And CentOS CI specifically is uh, we're looking to be uh, that sort of provider. So what else do we have? All right, thank you all for coming out. It was good to see you.